Hello friends and family, welcome to church today. We are so glad you have joined us. I tell you today is a special day. It is Father's Day and as a pastoral team we want to say Happy Father's Day. You know what, being a father is not easy. We are fathers, it's tough but it is worth it. And I want to encourage you, whoever you are, would you reach out to your dad and honor them? You know, the Bible says, when you honor your dad and mom, you will be blessed. Do it today. Fathers are not perfect, but they surely try. They are hardest. So do something for them today as you celebrate Father's Day. And by the way, if you're joining us for the first time, we are so honored you've joined us. Would you let us know who you are by writing to us, connect at watertochurch.com. Otherwise, I hope you are ready to worship. Get up on your feet and the worship team is ready to lead us in some awesome worship together.
Jesus, this song is forever yours. A thousand hallelujahs and a thousand more. Indeed, Lord Jesus, you deserve all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory, both now and forevermore, for you alone are worthy. And we thank you that we get to call you our Lord and our Savior. Well, friends, this particular day, as we get to a moment of prayer, I want to remind you of the story in the book of John chapter 2, when Jesus was inviting at the wedding of Cana. While he was there, he turned water into wine. And the Bible says this, that on that day, Jesus revealed his glory to his disciples. So even now, as we get to pray, why don't we invite Jesus into your situation that he would reveal his greatness in your circumstance, that he would change your situation right side up today, that he would turn your circumstance from bad to good. Why don't we pray right now? Father, I join together in prayer with my friends and my brothers and sisters that even in this very moment, as they are crying out to you, oh God, we pray that you would come into that circumstance. Like you turned water into wine, would you change their situation from bad to good? Would you deliver them? Would you heal them? Would you set them free? Would you bring forth your provision? Would you reveal your glory in that situation that they will know the greatness of our God? And indeed, oh God, this day, we will sing a thousand hallelujahs because of your greatness in this moment. We give you thanks for that in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen and amen. Well, you know what? God is an amazing God. So I want you to right now remove your Bible from wherever it is, open that notebook, get your pen and get ready to learn from the Word of God today as we continue in this sermon series on knowing the Holy Spirit. And as you do that, God richly, richly bless you. Thank you so much, Pastor James. Well, we're total charge. I'm so excited to bring God's word to you today. And I believe that it's going to be a word that's going to encourage you and your family. A couple of weeks ago, we began an important sermon series on Holy Spirit. Here's what I want you to know. It is absolutely impossible for you to live as a disciple of Jesus without the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why this sermon series is very important. We began by talking about who Holy Spirit is. We got to know from Scripture that Holy Spirit is God and He is a person. Then last week we talked about, from Scripture, the fact that Holy Spirit is our helper, sent to us by Jesus to guide us into all truth and to help us in our weaknesses. Now, if you missed any one of those sermons, please download our Toto app and listen to that message. I know it will be a blessing to you and to anyone that you share it with. It was Tuesday this week. I was driving into work and then the tire on the driver's side began to wobble. I wondered what was going on. So I said, you know, let me drive about another 100 meters and then I'm going to pull over to the side of the road. I didn't make it to the 100 meter point. In fact, my car simply ground to a halt. And so I stopped, I got up, I left on the double indicators, I came out and I found that the joint that was holding the tire to the shaft was suddenly out. My tire was just hanging a little bit by itself. I didn't know what to do, I was absolutely powerless. I just called my mechanic who came. About 40 minutes later, he fixed the tire, drove me to work, and then took the car for about an hour, returned it, and said everything was fine. I was absolutely powerless in that moment, but so thankful for my mechanic who came to help. Do you sometimes feel that way in life? Do you feel weak? Do you feel inadequate? Do you feel powerless to represent Jesus to the people around you? Today, I want to talk to you about Holy Spirit who empowers us to be witnesses. Let's pray together. Jesus, we thank you so much for your word. And we ask that as we turn to your word, speak to us. Empower us to be witnesses who are telling the world about you. In Jesus' name, and everybody says, 
Amen and Amen. This is what Jesus said. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Jesus promised his disciples that when the Holy Spirit would come upon them, they would receive power to be his witnesses. There's two important words in that scripture there, the word power and the word witness. And I want us to look at them both. Let's start with the word witness. He says again, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Well, who is a witness? A witness is a person who gives a true testimony of something that has happened because they have personally seen, heard, or experienced what they are talking about. I know some of you love watching those series on television, uh, some of them legal series, where you see a witness brought to the stand and questioned. And the witness is meant to give evidence so that they can uh, stand in the place of the person whose case is in court and say, I know what the person is talking about. In fact, here is the evidence. The witness gives evidence. And in the very same way, we are witnesses. Jesus calls us to be witnesses. His disciples were witnesses because they had personally been with him. They had personally had him speak and had experienced him firsthand. John, uh, the apostle of Jesus, writes in 1 John chapter 1, uh, verse 1 and verse 3, he says, We proclaim to you the one who existed from the beginning, whom we have heard and seen. We saw him with our own eyes and touched him with our own hands. He is the word of life. We proclaim to you what we ourselves have actually seen and heard. And so as people who had seen and heard and touched Jesus, who had been with him, who had seen his life firsthand, they were witnesses. And their role was to go from place to place telling people about who Jesus was and about what Jesus had taught and about how Jesus had commanded them to live. They were witnesses. They were to tell people about how God loved us so much that he sent Jesus to us. They're witnesses of the gospel, telling how Jesus came to save us from our sin and reconcile us to God the Father. This is what they were witnesses to because they had experienced it firsthand. You know, if you're born again, you are a witness. Jesus calls you to tell the world about him and how he has saved you from your sin. That's what witness is. But again, we read in verse 8, but you receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Jesus told his disciples that they would receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on them. In other words, Holy Spirit would give them the power to be witnesses. You see, Holy Spirit is the helper who gives us the power that we need to be a witness for Jesus. This power refers to the divine ability, the divine enablement that Holy Spirit gives us so that we can tell people about Jesus. You see, it is absolutely impossible to be an effective witness for Jesus without the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Just like this keyboard you see that we use in church, it needs electricity to power it up so that it can function. You know, in the very same way, we are powerless without the Holy Spirit. We cannot witness without the Holy Spirit. But you see, ours is better. We do not need something. We need someone. We need a Holy Spirit to be witnesses for Jesus. Jesus himself relied on the power of the Holy Spirit to do the work that his father had sent him to do. In Luke 4, 18, Jesus preaches saying, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Jesus had an assignment from his Father and he depended on the power of the Holy Spirit to do his assignment. You see, as witnesses, we are called to carry on the work that Jesus began. And this work can only be done in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus asked his disciples to wait in Jerusalem in the upper room and not to do any of that work until they had received the Holy Spirit because when the Holy Spirit would come upon them, they would then receive power to go out and be witnesses for him. You know, friends, in the very same way, you and I need Holy Spirit's power. If we're going to tell the world about Jesus, we need His divine enablement. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. 
This is a divine work. It is a spiritual work that we have been called to. To witness for Jesus to the world. To tell people that Jesus saves. To tell people that Jesus loves them and he died for them and he rose from the dead. He has the power to forgive them of their sin and reconcile them to God the Father. He takes the power of the Holy Spirit. That is a divine message that requires divine enablement. Very, very important. So we need the Holy Spirit. We also have an enemy. We have an enemy called Satan who is going to do everything he can to stop us from doing the work that God has called us to. So we need the power of the Holy Spirit against our enemy Satan so that we can successfully be witnesses. So as witnesses, what does Holy Spirit empower us to do? Three things. Holy Spirit empowers us to preach the gospel with boldness. Holy Spirit empowers us to perform signs, miracles, and wonders. And Holy Spirit empowers us to endure persecution with joy. Let's talk about each of them. Number one, as witnesses, Holy Spirit empowers us to preach the gospel with boldness. You see, today many people struggle to share their faith. There is a timidity. There is a, a fear that grips their hearts and they are unable to share their faith. Sometimes it's because they genuinely don't know how to share their faith. Sometimes they're afraid of looking weird or looking overly spiritual. Sometimes they're afraid of experiencing rejection because they're going to share their faith and people will not receive the gospel and they feel rejected. Or sometimes they feel they don't have enough scripture to be able to convince people. You know, Peter, the disciple of Jesus, felt the very same way. He experienced fear for being associated with Jesus. The Bible tells us in Luke 22 that when Jesus had been arrested and was taken away and was getting ready to be killed, uh, Peter came to the courtyard near the place where Jesus had been arrested. And one of the ladies identified him and said, you are with Jesus. And three times Peter denied not knowing Jesus. He was afraid of associating with Jesus because it meant he too would be killed. But then we see a different Peter in Acts chapter 2. Because after he denied Jesus, Jesus met him and forgave him and restored him to be the leader of the disciples. But Jesus said, wait in Jerusalem, receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Peter was one of those in Acts chapter 2 who was waiting for the power of the Holy Spirit. And when the power of the Holy Spirit came upon Peter, he was no longer fearful. He was fearless. He was preaching the gospel with boldness. Yes, he was preaching to the Jews, his very own people. And though they were considered as uneducated, low-class citizens, he had a boldness and he had a passion with which he preached the gospel. He had a conviction that came upon him because he had received the power of the Holy Spirit. This fearful Peter who could not identify with Jesus was standing before a multitude and boldly telling them about Jesus. It only happens by the power of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2 verse 29 and then 37 to 41. After Peter had said, listen guys, the Jesus that you crucified, he is the son of God. He is the Messiah. The Bible says when the people had this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Wow! From a fearful Peter, to a bold Peter full of courage to talk about Jesus. And on that day, 3,000 people gave their hearts to Jesus. You know, just like Peter, Holy Spirit wants to give you boldness. He wants to help you overcome the fear that you feel. Whenever it's time to preach the gospel and you feel afraid, Holy Spirit wants to help you overcome that fear. He wants to give you the courage to share the gospel. Because you see, the fear may not completely go away. But even while you have sweaty palms, even while you have shaky knees, even while you're stammering, Holy Spirit wants to give you the boldness to look into the eye of your family member. Could be your dad or your mom, your sibling, could be a, a relative, it could be a workmate or a classmate. Holy Spirit wants to give you the boldness to tell people about Jesus. I remember while a pastor at Watoto Church, Kansanga, we wanted to reach university students with the gospel. So I got a group of students and we walked to the hostels together. Many of them had never shared their faith. They were absolutely afraid and wondering, Pastor, is this really going to work? I'm so afraid. I sent them two by two to the rooms. They went. 
We met about two and a half hours later. They came back with excitement, rejoicing that people had actually listened to them and had responded to an invitation to an event we were calling Power Bank. Later, over a period of two years, we saw about 300 students give their lives to Jesus. Why? These fearful students, now full of the Holy Spirit, had gone to hostels and invited their classmates and seen many of them give their hearts to Jesus. Why? It is a boldness that only Holy Spirit can bring. And my prayer is that today, Holy Spirit will give you boldness to begin to preach the gospel fearlessly. This boldness also includes not living your life privately, but publicly as a follower of Jesus. Number two, as witnesses, Holy Spirit empowers us to perform signs, miracles, and wonders. You know, we all meet people who are facing certain challenging situations in life. They do not know what to do. They've come to the end of themselves. You know, that is an opportunity for us to put our faith in Jesus and trust Him to perform a miracle. Yes, through us, God can perform some miracles. But listen, those miracles only happen by the power of the Holy Spirit. What is a miracle? The Bible calls miracles signs. In other words, miracles are designed to point people to Jesus. You see, when you meet a sign, a sign is not the destination. A sign is simply telling you where the destination is. In the very same way, a miracle is not the end in itself. Jesus will always be the end. Miracles point us to Jesus. Wow. In Acts chapter 3, Peter and Jonah headed to the temple on the day of prayer. They meet this guy who's seated at a gate called Beautiful. He's been there for many, many years. He always begged to get what to eat. They didn't have money to give him. So Peter looks at him and says, look at us. Silver and gold we do not have, but what we have we give to you. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk. And a miracle happened. That guy leapt to his feet. He began to walk. They went with him to the temple and people recognized him as the lame beggar that sat at the gate. They were all astounded. They were all amazed at what had happened to this lame beggar. But Peter saw an opportunity to point people to Jesus and share the gospel. Why? He was a witness. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 3, verse 12 to 20, Peter saw his opportunity and addressed the crowd. People of Israel, he said, what is so surprising about this? And why stare at us as though we had made this man walk by our own power or godliness? See, a miracle is not performed by us. It is God through us at work to perform that miracle. He says, for it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of all ancestors, who has brought glory to his servant Jesus by doing this. This is the same Jesus whom you handed over and rejected before Pilate, despite Pilate's decision to release him. You rejected this holy righteous one and instead demanded the release of a murderer. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead and we are witnesses to this fact. Through faith in the name of Jesus, this man was healed. And you know how crippled he was before. Faith in Jesus' name has healed him before your very own eyes. Friends, I realize that what you and your leaders did to Jesus was done in ignorance, but God was fulfilling what all the prophets had foretold about the Messiah, that he would suffer these things. Now repent of your sins and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away. Then times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord and he will again send you Jesus, your appointed Messiah. Wow. A miracle happened and Peter drew the attention to Jesus. He used the opportunity to share the gospel so that people would put their faith in Jesus. That is what a miracle is. It's not an opportunity for you to become a superstar. It's not an opportunity for you to draw attention to yourself. No, it is an opportunity for you to point people to Jesus. Why? You are a witness to Jesus. We are here to tell the world about Jesus. So it's not about us. It is always about Jesus. Point people to Jesus. And so as witnesses, Holy Spirit wants to release His power through you so that you can tell people about Jesus. I remember a couple that I met at church that had lost a baby and they were frustrated and they were going through some pain. And the gentleman was really hurting Yes, because he'd lost his baby, but he had something that had been happening from his childhood. His dad had ended up in prison to a court case that had gone bad. And so he was angry at God. And now he had lost a child, he was double angry at God. I met them at church. We prayed. 
And I walked with them at Journey for a little while as we believed God for a miracle of a child because they wanted a child. Well, a couple of months later, they were pregnant. Then I walked with them a journey of nine months as we believed God for successful birth, which actually happened. God gave them a miracle and God gave them a baby. It was absolutely amazing. You know, when God gave them a baby, that gentleman stopped being angry at God. He made things right with God. He was a different sort of man. And shortly after that, he gave his life to Jesus. This man who was angry at God and wanted to do nothing with God because of the pain and anger in his heart, because of a miracle, now gave his heart to Jesus. Today that couple has three more children. There are four children all together. When a miracle happens, introduce people to Jesus. Don't draw attention to yourself. Why? We are here to be witnesses pointing people to Jesus. He wants to do it in you and he wants to do it through you. Thirdly, as witnesses, Holy Spirit gives us the power to endure persecution with joy. Yes. You see, persecution is when you suffer for your faith or because of your faith in Jesus. And being a disciple or witness will never be easy. Jesus spoke about this. He was talking to his disciples and telling them, okay, I'm going to the Father. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, but remain in me so that you will bear fruit and fruit that will last. That's what he was talking to them about. But then he began to speak to them about what was going to happen in the days that lie ahead. John 15, 18 to 21 and 25 to 27, Jesus said, if the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I've chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember that, remember what I told you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obeyed my teaching, they will also obey yours also. They will treat you this way because of my name, for they do not know the one who sent me. But this is to fulfill what is written in their law. They hated me without reason. Then the Bible tells us about the work of the Holy Spirit. When the advocate comes, an advocate is Holy Spirit, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify for you have been with me from the very beginning. And Jesus is talking to his disciples saying, troubled times are coming. You're going to face persecution for my sake because you follow me, because you put your faith in me. You're going to face trouble. But Holy Spirit, who I have sent to you, is going to give you the power. He's going to give you the divine ability. Though under persecution, He's going to give you divine ability to hold on to your faith in me. He's going to give you divine ability to endure regardless of what the price is, regardless of what the cost is. He's going to give you the ability to hold on to your faith in me regardless. And not just endure, but endure with joy. You see, John 15 starts when Jesus is talking to them, remain in me so that you may bear fruit. Well, the fruit of the Holy Spirit that he wants to produce in us when we go through suffering of every kind is endurance and he produces it with joy. The Bible says for the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, Galatians chapter 5. So Holy Spirit produced joy. The joy of salvation that comes from knowing Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Paul said, everything that I've gained, I count it as lost for the sake of knowing Jesus. That joy of knowing Jesus is what Holy Spirit wants to produce in your life. That even though you suffer for Christ, you do it willingly and you do it joyfully. Wow. That is what Holy Spirit wants to produce in us. And I tell you, the believers face persecution. Read through the book of Acts. One of them is in chapter 7 of Acts where Stephen is stoned. We continue to read of beatings. We continue to read of imprisonments. We continue to read of harassments that the believers faced day in and day out. It was a difficult time. In Acts chapter 4, Peter and John were arrested for the miracle in Acts chapter 3. And they were threatened to stop preaching in the name of Jesus. They said, no, we will obey God and not man. They were threatened. But because the miracle was undeniable, they had to be released. They returned to their people and they shared with them the threats that had been thrown at them. This is how the people responded. They reached out to God in prayer. Acts chapter 4 verse 29 to 32. They prayed, Now Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant Jesus. 
The Bible says after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Wow! Holy Spirit responded to their prayer by giving them the ability and the boldness to endure under persecution with joy and continue preaching the gospel, even if it meant losing their lives, even if it meant their family rejecting them. It didn't matter what it cost them, we're going to do it joyfully because they understood their divine assignment as a witness to tell people about Jesus. I know that some of you are going through some serious persecution, could be at work, maybe it's in your family. You're the only believer. And times are tough. Maybe you've been thrown out of home. Maybe your family wants nothing to do with you. Maybe you lost your job because you are trying to do the right thing at your place of work. I want to encourage you, whether you're here in Uganda or in any other nation around the world, Holy Spirit wants to give you the ability, the divine ability to endure with joy, regardless of what you go through for the sake of Christ, that you do it willingly and joyfully for the sake of pointing people to Jesus. You know, the thing about endurance with joy is this. It is a powerful witness to the world. I think about the centurion in Matthew 27, when Jesus had hung on that cross and the curtain in the temple had been torn and the ground had shaken. A centurion looked and said, surely this is the son of God. The endurance of Jesus on the cross ministered to him. I think about Acts chapter 16, Paul and Silas in prison who began to worship. The foundations of the prisons were shaken. The gates were broken open and the shackles that bound their hands fell off. Wow. When that jailer met them and they hadn't run away, something beautiful happened. They pointed him to Jesus and he gave his life to Jesus, not just him, but his entire family. You see, when we endure with joy, there is a powerful witness that goes out to people saying that what he has believed, who he has believed is true and faithful. And that is an opportunity to point people to Jesus. So now that we know that Holy Spirit empowers us, what are we to do? Two things, pray and receive Holy Spirit so that he will empower you to be a witness. Secondly, step out to share your faith. Listen, you don't just wait for the power in your room. That power is activated. Remember, if you're born again, you've already received the Spirit of God. Don't wait for a feeling. You're not just going to begin suddenly shaking that no, oh, the power of God has come over me. No, you receive the Spirit by faith. Once you pray, believe and receive. And once you receive, step out. Go out, begin sharing your faith. Don't wait. You see, for Peter, when Jesus called him out to the water, Jesus didn't make the water like ice and then Peter walked. No, Peter stepped onto water and then suddenly he had the ability to walk. In the same way, step out in faith and the power of God will begin to come through. It will begin to show why you have stepped out in faith and in obedience to what Jesus has asked you to do as a witness. Begin to share your faith and you see the power of God begin to move so powerfully. What an opportunity we have to step out and share our faith. Remember when you share your faith, always tell them about God's love. Always tell them about what God has done in your life and how he has changed your life and how he has saved you. And then always make an invitation. Give them the opportunity to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Some people might respond and say, yes, praise the Lord. If some say no, continue praying for them. Bring them to church. Take them to your cell family. Give them every opportunity to hear the gospel and respond to the love of Jesus. Wow. So here at Watoto Church, we have Focus 10 cards. I want you to take that Focus 10 card that has the names of all the people you want to see saved and then begin to pray that they'll give their hearts to Jesus. See friends, Holy Spirit wants to empower us to be witnesses for Jesus. He will do this by empowering us to preach the gospel with boldness, to perform signs, miracles and wonders and to endure persecution with joy. Therefore, today, pray and receive the Holy Spirit and secondly, step out to share your faith. I know that some of us who are watching this service today, you're not born again. This is your opportunity. Jesus loves you so much. You don't have to earn your salvation. Come to Jesus just the way you are. You might feel like the worst of all sinners, but I'm telling you, Jesus loves you and he died for you. 
put your faith in him right now, right now. And you're saying, that's me, Pastor Brian. I want you to raise your hand in the comment section there and say, I want to give my heart to Jesus. Maybe you're recommitting your life to Jesus. You had walked away, but you're coming back today. Come on, give your heart to Jesus right now. Pray this prayer after me. Say, dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. I recognize that I'm a sinner and I need the Savior. Jesus, you are the only Savior. I give you my heart and I give you my life. Forgive me of my sin. I will follow you for the rest of my life in Jesus name and everybody says amen 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 you prayed that prayer welcome to God's family you are now born again and full of the Holy Spirit now I want you to begin to step out and share your faith here's one more thing I want you to do at the end of our service today I want you to spend a moment and go before Holy Spirit in prayer and say Holy Spirit talk to me about that one person you want me to meet this week and I want you to write down their name and I want you to write down their number and then I want you to make an appointment with them this week and I want you to pray that Holy Spirit will give you the power and the ability to boldly preach the gospel to them. I'm telling you, look out. God is going to do something amazing. Do write to us, connect at watorochurch.com to tell us about what Holy Spirit has done and the way people have responded to the gospel. Also, if you've given your heart to Jesus, write to us, connect at watorochurch.com and tell us we want to come alongside you and help you grow in your faith in Jesus. I want to thank you so much for listening to the Word today. And at this point, I want to hand the service back to Pastor James. What an incredible message that was concerning the Holy Spirit. I pray you take that and live it out every day and just continue to grow in the person of the Holy Spirit. And I guarantee you, we will see God do amazing things in your lives in the city and in the nation where we are. Well, it's that time of our service when we get together to give to the Lord. The Bible tells us it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. And that really takes after who God is. When He gave us Jesus, we were blessed that we got salvation. And therefore, your giving goes a long way to extend the kingdom of God here in Kampala, in South Sudan, Juba, and in every other way that the Lord enables us to extend His kingdom. And so, watch this video for more options to give. Please take a moment to visit our website at watertochurch.com forward slash giving to find the most convenient giving option for you. You can also scan the QR code on your screen to open up our giving page. If you'd like to give via mobile money, you can find all the instructions for your specific carrier and respective codes. A secure option for those who wish to give through Visa or MasterCard debit or credit cards is also available Details for other giving options including checks, bank transfer or agent banking can also be found on this page. Should you stay close to one of our 14 celebration points, we have secured gift boxes available for you to drop off your envelope if this is more convenient. And for those of you watching from Juba, South Sudan, we have giving options especially for you through bank transfer and Mgurush. Thank you for your faithfulness in helping to build God's kingdom.